Good morning, Daisy engineers. I, my name's Lori and I'm fiddling around with my screen here. Thank you for your patience. Okay, so today we're going to be doing um, mechanical engineering badge number two, Daisy Roller Coaster Design Challenge. And there's the badge that you'll get when you've completed these activities. So for batch number two, roller coaster design, our goal or our purpose is that when you've earned the badge, you'll know more about the forces of motion and how roller coasters work. Steps number one <clears throat> are that you're going to design your own roller coaster plan, draw a picture and a simple marble roller coaster with hills, loops, and turns that you'd like to test. So instead of a car, we're going to use a marble and a paper track. And we'll talk about how you can make sure that that marble goes the full length of the track that you've designed. And the number, step number two is we're going to build a model of your roller coaster. And step number three is we'll make changes and keep testing until your marble is able to complete all of the hills and turns and loops to the end of the track. We'll talk about the forces and the ways that we can make sure that happens. Roller coaster thrills. Have you ever been on a roller coaster? I remember my first roller coaster ride. <clears throat> it wasn't at Silverwood in Idaho. I think it was in at the Seattle World's Fair in 1962. Boy, that was a long time ago. So <clears throat> what did the car feel like and the track look like? Were there steep hills and loops and twists and turns? And it probably looked really big. Some roller coasters are small, um, but we're going to be designing one that's like the big ones. So was it scary for you, but fun at the same time? I know it was for me. And my tummy felt funny. I don't know, it felt like it was up in my chest or something. Did you cry sometimes on the trip? Did you laugh? Did you scream? Did your hair stand on end? Did you feel kind of pushed back into your seat? Or did you feel like you were floating out of your seat? So I don't know about you, but when I was done with my first roller coaster ride, it was fun, thrilling, and there were times I thought, I don't want it, I want off. But then you know what happened? I got to the end of the ride and I couldn't wait to get back on it again. So that's, roller coasters are designed to be thrilling and exciting, but they're also designed very importantly to be very safe. So we're going to zoom, coast and roll with potential and kinetic energy. These are the two forces that we're gonna be, the main forces that we're gonna be talking about today. Roller coasters don't have engines like cars or trains. So the feelings, that you have on a roller coaster are from rapid changes in the direction of forces of motion acting on the car, the track, and your body all at once. So engineers, designers, and builders use these forces of motion in particular, so potential energy and kinetic energy, to make roller coasters exciting, but also very safe. Roller coaster cars, as I said, make use two main kinds of energy. So potential energy is, I think of it as a pot full of soup. Um, it's got a lot, it's holding a lot of energy that your body could use, but it hasn't acted on it yet, but you can't quite use it yet. So the potential energy is stored energy, ready to be used. And in the case of a roller coaster, that potential energy is caused by the car, the marble sitting on the hill <clears throat> and gravity pulling on that car. More about that later. So roller coaster cars use two main kinds of energy, potential energy, stored. So I think of pot, potential, stored energy. Kinetic energy, I think of movement and kicking. So kinetic energy is the energy of motion. Potential energy is the stored energy that you can use, that your marble can use for the whole trip down the roller coaster. So there are other forces like friction and airflow that act against these two forces. 
And we'll talk about that more if you are um, joining us for model cars batch number three. So potential energy is stored energy. The higher the car is off the ground when it starts, the more potential or stored energy it has. And why is that? If it has, if the car is up here, way, way up here, the energy, the distance between the ground and where your car starts is gravity pulling on it. So the higher up it is, the more gravitational energy will be pulling on that car and the more stored energy that, that car has to go down a hill. The total potential energy at the top of the hill on your car before it gets started can't be more than it was at that time. And this is important because it's the maximum energy that you, your car or your marble will have to go the full length of the track. So it has to be the highest point of your roller coaster. Kinetic energy. When the, ener when the car starts to move down the hill, we've got a lot of potential energy here, and the car starts to move down the hill, it goes, and it's a really tall hill. Let's see, it's a really tall hill, really steep, steep hill. And it starts up here, it's got some potential energy, and it goes to the bottom of the hill. And at the bottom of the hill, as it races down, we have the maximum kinetic energy. So that the potential energy is converted into kinetic energy or the energy of motion, of kicking, right? So it starts with potential, goes down to the bottom of the hill. And now, because it has more kinetic energy, it has the ability to go up the next hill. And it, when it's at just at the top of the next hill, it'll regain some potential energy. And then it goes down a hill and it gains it has some kinetic energy. And if it has enough kinetic energy, it will go up the third hill and sit at the top, and, and not, maybe not sit at the top, but at the top it'll have a little bit more potential energy. So the energy changes between when it starts, the potential energy, the kinetic energy that it gets from going down that first hill will carry it up the second hill, but only if the second hill is lower right than the first hill because you can't have a hill that's higher than the first hill because you only have so much potential energy and the, to get to the height of a hill that's larger taller than this starting point means that you need more potential energy than you have you're starting with so that's why you have tall hill shorter hills so these energy changes between potential and kinetic, potential and kinetic, continue throughout all the loops, hills, and turns you're going to make. Mabel, the marble, is going to make. So again, okay, let's just look at it as a picture. We're starting at the top. This is the very start of our roller coaster. We have a lot of potential energy, right? Gravity is pulling down on it. It's way high up, so we've got a lot of gravity pulling down. But there's not much kinetic energy, energy of movement yet. So there's the, as the car starts to roll down and it goes pew, down the bottom. And at the bottom, you've lost some potential energy. You had a lot up here, but you've lost some. So you went down the hill and you don't have as much gravity pulling on you down here. This is the bottom of the hill. A lot of gravity pulling here, not so much here. So you've lost some, you have lower potential energy at this point. And but you have a lot of kinetic energy You're going really fast down here. And now that kinetic energy is going to carry you up the next hill where you'll have a little less lower potential energy, but still have a lot of kinetic energy from that you got from going down the hill, if this hill, if you, let's say you've made the hill really tall, the second hill, what would happen? You have only this much potential energy from the ground. You go like this. 
are you going to be able to get back up a hill that's taller than the original hill? Yeah. And you've probably seen this if you work with, um, if you've ever run matchbox cars or race cars on a, on a track that don't, cars that don't have motors. You've probably seen the same thing. So you know, you've experienced this. If you start your car too low and the other hills are too high, they'll just, your marble will just sit down there and not be able to go up the hill. So that's potential, high potential, lower potential energy and less potential energy than you had here but you'll have because you're zooming down the hill maximum kinetic energy here and enough kinetic energy to carry you back up so you still have some kinetic energy and it's gonna you're gonna sail down and you'll get a little bit more kinetic energy and at each time you go, you'll lose a little bit more potential energy. Remember, this is all we have for the whole trip that you'll make with your marble or your car. Okay, so let's design your model roller coaster. Think about if you've seen the roller coaster at Silverwood or other theme parks, think about how, how the engineers built it. If they didn't they didn't build it out of paper like we're going to they had to build it out of strong structures and know exactly how much weight and how much force how much potential energy how much kinetic energy was going to be acting on their object or the car in motion so think about that and just draw just have fun drawing what you think your roller coaster you'd like your roller coaster to look like it doesn't have to be what you finally end up with, but just use your imagination. And then gather all the supplies you need, which are right here. So you're gonna need a large piece of cardboard, poster board, um, some glass marbles, and colored paper, um, printable paper, if you have a printer, because you'll be able to print the templates. If not, you can still use colored paper that's a little stiff. You don't wanna use really, really, flimsy paper, really flexible paper. So you want to use either colored paper or card, a tag board, cardboard. Um, when I say cardboard, it should be tag board. It should be fairly flexible and printable. And you'll see the uh, template download in, an, in a minute. I've got them described down here and elsewhere. So, and you also need something to support your track as it's going up and down hills. Right, you need something to, to put under those hills to support them. You'll need scotch tape and maybe masking tape or duct tape. Um, quick set glue you can use, super glue, glue gun. These will probably be less critical than the scotch tape for putting your track together. Uh, scissors, a ruler, pencil, and paper for your design sketches. Okay, so here are the resources that please take advantage of because they're really excellent. I spent a lot of time fiddling with different, you can make roller coasters from a lot of different things. I tried aluminum foil and for reasons that I won't go into today because it takes too long, it was an epic fail. Didn't work. If I'd worked, if I, but I learned a lot from it, which is what engineers do. You think of weigh all the materials you might be able to use and there's there are a lot of them and there are a lot of examples other than paper that you can use on youtube and i would or or on online i'd encourage you to look at those because the most important lesson that we're going to take away is the relationship between potential energy the pot and the kinetic the kicking kind of energy and how you need to apply those when you design and build your roller coaster so if you go online, um, you can find these templates that you can use for loops, you can use them for straight track or hills, you can use them for curves. It gives you the templates that you have to fold for um, the, the structures too. And so these are very good resources. Please, please use them, they're free. Um, here's an example of the kinds of tests you might run after you, you build your uh, roller coaster. But again, it's up to you. So build your roller coaster model. Um, 
you can print or draw the track. There are, if you go online to those resources, if you don't have a printer, that's okay. It'll show you how to draw, measure and draw uh, a, a new track on an eight by 10, eight by 11 uh, piece of paper. So you don't have to have a printer to do this. It's helpful if you do, but don't worry if you don't. Um, so just ask your mom or dad or parent to uh, go, go look at those, those links and they'll, they'll help you either print out or um, make with a ruler and a, a pencil, make your own. So you make the loops and curves and hills by cutting out and then you bend these little tabs like this. So these you know, get strips and you bend these tabs and you can bend them and tape them so they make all sorts of cool shapes like this. And this could be a hill. It'll, it takes a little while, so be patient and get help if you need it um, to tape these together to make these shapes. But I think um, Daisy Engineers, you're very resourceful and I know you really try hard and you'll get, you'll have some fun with this. So attach the pieces together with tape and decide wh how, where you want to raise your, um, raise and lower the hills and the loops in your roller coaster track. Remembering what? That the most amount of energy you're gonna have to carry your marble all the way through the track is at the top of the highest hill, which is gonna be your first hill. So you keep testing. As you build, keep testing with your marble. Um, and you'll find out from the very beginning that each piece you build, if there's a problem with the piece. And then when you go to test finally, you still are gonna to have to do a lot of adjustments, but that's part of what engineers do. So improving your model, step three. If your marble didn't make it to the end of the track, let's try and figure out why. I can give you an example of why my aluminum foil track didn't work. It didn't work because I used reusable, I mean, I, I like to reuse aluminum foil. So I had some aluminum foil and I thought this is great, it'd be flexible, I can make it like this. I can kind of mold it and make it like that. So when I ran, I made my track and I, I ran the marble on it, it the marble just went boop, 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 boop. It went fast for a little while and then it just sat there. And I couldn't, no matter how steep, how much potential energy I gave it, it didn't go down the hill. And then I realized, I realized that aluminum foil had too many bumps in it. And like I said, we'll talk about friction in the, uh, for the model car unit. But there were so many bumps in it that caused bumps on the track, caused the, the two, the marble and the track sliding together caused friction, which is a force that pulls back the kinetic energy. So it reduces the kinetic energy. So it could only go down, it only has so much kinetic energy and it couldn't go all the way around the loop. Okay, so just wanna tell you that things don't work out, but it's always fun to try new ideas because you learn a lot. Uh, is there a spot on your track where the marble got stuck? Mine did. Was the marble going too slow to make it through the loop? Yes, mine did. Yours is, isn't going to because you'll have a you'll have better, this paper is a much better structure. So you wanna make changes. You'll have to kind of make little changes, big changes, but you'll, um, that's the fun of the whole design process. And remember, you're probably going to have to work with potential energy and kinetic energy a lot to make sure you have the right balance at the start of each hill that you make to be able to carry your marble forward. The marble <clears throat> did not go through the loop or over the hill. It was taller than the first hill, and remember why? Because the first hill has, the marble has the most potential energy, and if you're trying to force it to go up a hill that has more potential energy, Improve your model, make the changes, make whatever you want to do, um, learn as you, as you go. There's so much more to be learned in not having your marble go all the way than to have it stop and then you adjust and you, you learn along the way. So keep adjusting and testing until your marble gets, us, gets through the whole track that you designed. So 
<clears throat> now that you've learned about potential and kinetic energy and have designed and built your own roller coaster with Mabel the marble, or whoever, whatever you want to name her, um, how can you give service? Maybe talking to a younger brother or sister, or maybe an older brother and sister about what you learned about force and motion, potential energy, kinetic energy, and you can talk to them about how, how roller coasters work and how they can build a marble roller coaster. What else would you like to do? What else in thinking about how to engineer things using just the forces of motion, no engines, no gasoline, what are you inspired to explore, Daisy Engineers? Bye-bye, have fun, I'll see you next time.